Welcome back to my channel, Linda's 144 Hobbies. And today you will get a small um, understanding to why I call my channel 144 Hobbies because even though it is a floss tube episode eight, seven, eight, somewhere around there, um, I'm gonna involve some yarnage as well. But welcome and cheers. Mm. Coffee. I can drink coffee from the moment I wake up to the second I fall asleep in the evening. I bought myself a new cup. I don't know if it's mirrored, but it says, take me as I am, or kiss my ass, eat shit, and step on a Lego. <laughs> I just, when I saw this one, I was bombarded with uh, advertisement on, I think it was Facebook, and I saw this mug and I'm like, <laughs> gotta have it. And I was like, should I bring it to work? So how are you guys doing? I hope uh, you're enjoying the late winter time or whatever we're going to call it. And as you notice, I'm, I'm inside once again. And it's because we have a storm going outside. It's raining, it's windy and grayish. And I wouldn't be able to, to be outside with cross stitch stuff anyway um, so it was a little bit disappointing because uh, it was nice to go out for a while and just you know record and be out in the woods on my own and you know new made coffee in the woods is just very nice <laughs> it's very nice uh, we had a storm last weekend as well or the beginning of the week hey we had a lot of no not a lot of trees falling but not just around where we live but I can imagine out in the bigger wood woods where uh, I've made my floss tubes there is usually quite a lot of fallen trees but around um, our place we had some broken off trees and a lot of uh, not sticks like the bigger uh, like a stick is just a small thin stick from a, a tree and then you have the bigger arms going out from the stem so those were broken off uh, and also of course smaller sticks all, all around so but I love when it's stormy and dramatic and uh, a bit dangerous I I, I know it gives uh, a lot of people trouble with their homes and stuff, but yeah, I, I like it anyway. I think the nature, the power, powers of nature is awesome. So yeah, um, yeah, I, I mentioned before that my life, uh, my free time isn't as it has been before New Year's Eve, but after, you know, the beginning of 2020, my new position, I'm just exhausted when I get home. And even if I do craft, it's not the same amount of time as before. And the thing with uh, recording YouTube videos and everything is, hasn't been as I wa wished it to be, but I will, I will try. I will try to do better. Better, and I haven't gotten that much haul this time I, either. Um, but I do have some, and I do have some um, progress to show. Um, you guys know that I'm working on uh, Once Upon a Fairy Tale. I haven't stitched anything on that yet. I haven't released a 
stitch along. I'm thinking about doing a small one today or anytime soon. Anyway, um, I've been working on like in my rotation, the uh, ink circles, squirrels of Sumatra. I haven't worked on that either. Um, what else am I doing? My grand monster, I haven't stitched on that one since the last time. Um, what else do I have? Well, and then I have my Mirabilia, Miss Christmas Eve. I have stitched on her. And the other uh, stitch along, the Mythical Creatures by Pain Free Crafts. If you haven't seen that stitch along, go check it out. It's awesome. And it only cost $13 to get the whole um, you don't get the pattern at once, of course, but you will get them su successfully. Well, whatever. You will get them every second week. You get a new letter. And in the end, you will have all of the patterns of the alphabetic. And you can then, you know, you don't have to put all of them on one piece of fabric. You can just choose one uh, letter to stitch. And that's kind of nice. And I think actually you could kind of integrate the, the frame as well. If you just choose one letter, you could stitch a part of the frame around that as well. I think that would be really cool. Uh, so I have stitched on that as well. And I just realized I didn't bring my pad because they released the letter D today. And I wanted to show you guys. And it wasn't a surprise that D is for dragon. But wait a second, I will go get my pad. Okay, I'm back. Um, let's see, so I want to show you, um, I want to show you um, the picture without showing you the pattern. And now I press the pattern, let's see. cute very sweet a lot of greens yeah so that's the mythical animal for or letter animal for uh, this couple of weeks and I'm gonna start it today and I was kind of feeling the feeling of doing a stitch along well stitching uh, that, not the whole thing, just the part of it. And uh, it will, it's a stitch along, but it's more like a stitch and chat, I guess. Um, so I don't know if I'm gonna do like a stitch along with a once upon a fairy tale, uh, and then like a stitch and chat, stitch along with the mythical creature chat. That's the plan. Uh, oh, and of course, you want to see my progress of the other letters. I'm really, I, I'm really loving this because it's not so much. Oh, by the way, I have the Harry Potter stitch along as well. Um, but they haven't released a new letter yet. I don't know if it was Heike or Rachel Ray who said that they release, they're going to release the second part on the 1st of March. And I haven't stitched any of the framing work on Harry Potter um, at all. Because I don't like uh, the fabric. But I'm not going to restart it like some do. <laughs> I'm going to keep at it. So here's the progress on the mythical creatures. Cool or what? Love it. So uh, the letter D is going to be here just under this part. And I'm thinking to get, um, I will try to stitch 
a part of the frame down as well so I will follow uh, the letter down uh, because you, you use the frame um, um, I'm so excited, I, I'm forgetting to, to breathe. Um, you use the frame of um, when you're placing the letters. So you, you get a picture in the pattern showing where to place the letter. And if you don't have a frame, you it's, it's for me, I don't know how I'm gonna figure out where to place the letter so I need to to get some of them the frame stitched as along as well but imagine and you know the the fabric is like a marble has a marble look to it there you go so it's gonna look so cool when it's done and it's framed and it's up on the wall you want to see a closer look by the way on the so this is the Anubis. The colors. Oh my god. And then you have the B for Basilisk. The colors also so awesome. And then you have the three-headed dog. And that's called Cerberus. Cerberus? Well, yep. I know I'm killing it. But it's like a fluffy from Harry Potter. And the Anubis and the three-headed dog uh, has uh, beads in their eyes. And the basilisk doesn't. And I don't know why. I was thinking about putting a bead in that eye as well. But I might do that, you know, later. I will see how many of the other uh, animals uh, who also has a bead. So yeah, a letter has taken me, the first one I did just like in two days because I was off work. Uh, but the other two uh, has taken me like a, w a week for each animal where I put most of my time in the weekend. So, as I said, I've also stitched on Mirabilia. I know I told you guys that there were a lot of dark green, so I get easily bored, but I've actually done quite a bit. I think I did like all of this and all of this in, I think in a, in a day last weekend. So that's nice. She's beautiful. Or should I say, here's Linda. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, beautiful, 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 beautiful. Um, but those are the only two cross stitch projects I have been working on. Um, oh, and I finally got my fabric from Crafty Kitten. It's good and it's bad. Um, the fabrics look beautiful. Actually, I haven't, I haven't opened them yet. I'm gonna open this with you. And you can see already that there is there are different colors, very pastel, so they're not so dramatic, but that's that's okay. Um, the first one I got, I waited for like two months to get, and it's the 28 count even weave Lugana. It's a 25 by 27, and it's called Mossy Ruins, and you can't see anything. You just have to take my word for it. I ordered this fabric for one of my Mirabil Mirabilias. I don't remember her name right now, but it's the lady in a long red dress with some black um, detail. She has long brown hair 
and there's some black detail blah, behind her and I was thinking she has like a red dress and uh, thinking about the color wheel the opposite color from <coughs> red is green and usually green and red makes a great couple so I wanted to go a little bit green and now because of the light I'm I will try to turn this off you know my side is as it is it's, it's <laughs> It's a mo mossy green? I don't know. It's very pale green. There is some color variation, but it's very slight. So I was like, mm, yeah, okay. Um, it feels nice and soft. Um, and she stitched the edges, which I appreciate a lot. So... But if it was worth waiting for two months, yeah, I don't know. But but it was nice. Um, it will be a great piece for one of the Mirabilias, for sure. So, good thing. Then I joined the monthly fabric club. It's called, uh, it was maybe the plus size, because I want those... Um, what size was this? Uh, 25 by 27. I'm sorry about the crinkling. Um, because when you're stitching 28 count uh, for the Mirabilias, you need, for some of them, a bigger uh, size. So I wanted to go with that. But there was a mistake with the, with the order uh, and I contacted um, the owner of Crafty Kitten and she said, fine, she's changing it up. It took a while and then I decided, I don't know. I mean, if I'm gonna wait for fabric this long, I didn't know of that she's that she was ill or anything. I've heard something about that. Um, <clears throat> then I can just order whichever fabric I want when it's time to choose fabric for one of my Mirabilias and just wait the two months to get whatever I choose. Uh, so I decided to leave the monthly club. And in a way, I'm glad because when I did receive my first month, of the fabric, it was the wrong fabric. Uh, I got Ada and I don't like Ada whatsoever. So I, now I have two pieces of Ada and I contacted her right away, of course. Uh, I mean, everyone is human, we can all make mistakes. And she looked at the order and saw that, yeah, she has sent the wrong uh, fabric. So she will re-dye and resend. But we're going to take a look at the fabric as well. So I got a piece of 22 by 27 count. Uh, no, 22 by 27, 16 count Ada. And this was the December limited edition. So it wasn't even the January club. <coughs> That's strange. I thought I ordered the uh, January, but this piece and the colors on the camera doesn't make it justice. It's really, really nice. And I'm so sad it's Ada. I'm so sad it's Ada. You get a very nice color variation. Let's just insert. Uh, I think there's like grayish, some yellow. Yeah, I, it's it's very nice, and uh, the the coloring is is very nice. Yeah, I don't know how to not 
it's a very strong light but then this is yeah but yeah it was very nice um, and what am I going to do with it I, I don't know maybe yeah I guess I will find something to do with it um, Maybe there's a project I want to do, like a sampler or, yeah, maybe like a long dog or an ink circle. And then the other piece, oh, it had a name. No, it was the December limited edition. So this is a, also a 22 by 27, 14 count. So it's a bigger count, right? It's also Ada and it's called Vintage Violets. And I was actually looking for a kind of a purplish um, weave for uh, the Mirabilia Red. Because there's quite a lot of grayish blue, I think, in her dress. And I was thinking maybe purple will do that piece very nice. So again... It's unfortunate that this is Ada. And yeah, they have a very nice smell to it. There's purple, a bit of pink, some yellow. doesn't make it justice but it's it's very nice very nice and subtle it's not so dra dramatic sometimes I wish I could just get some uh, uh, dyed fabric which is like wow really in your face and sometimes when you stitch on that I see pictures on Facebook and Instagram and you're like wow amazing like a long dog with just one color and i saw heike's floss tube and she had bought some silks from is it called floss for you holy sh they were so nice it was nice they were like shine to that silk was amazing and i can just imagine you know how the thread just slide slides through the fabric. Oh, that's nice. Now I'm going to turn on the lamp again. Yes. So, I like the dyeing, but I got the wrong count. So, thinking about the experience I've had with more or less all my orders of not all but 90% of all my orders for hand dyed fabric has been giving me some bad luck sorry um it just makes me think that maybe I should just not order any hand dyed fabric at all. I need some coffee for that. But the one uh, where I ordered a Harry Potter, uh, the Harry Potter fabric, which was uh, Mystic fabrics mystic dyed fabrics oh i'm so bad at names uh she sent that right away and that was very nice very 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 nice and oh uh i i ordered for the harry potter and i ordered the one for the ink circles and that fabric was amazing it's just the stitching of the harry potter pattern doesn't fit the 28 count one over one that's why 
I don't like it. Otherwise, I love the fabric. If I if I would have stitched it two over two, the problem would have not been there. But well, we will learn as we go. So that's all about um, cross stitching. I think, yeah. Um, I think I've ordered uh, like PDF patterns from Etsy. There was one with the uh, Hogwarts in a bottle. Someone has stitched that on fa Facebook. I ordered that. Um, yeah, it's silly of me. It's silly of me to mention things. I will have to put in pictures on or links on to show, but we'll see uh, if I do that. But let's jump to um, yarn, knitting, crocheting. I was fighting myself all through December when I was watching Michelle Benby's Flossmas series and she was knitting this cowl and getting all this wonderful hand-dyed yarn and I was like no you just went back to cross stitching you're loving it leave it alone and then Rachel Ray started to order some and I was like no 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 and then Heike started to order some and I was like, oh, no. And then I got bombarded with the knit crate. And then I got bombarded with some other advertisement. So I caved in and I joined a cow, a crochet along. It's for a big shawl with a variated cotton yarn. I showed you guys that in my last floss tube. So, but I have been spending a lot of time crocheting. And I'm going to try to show you my progress of the shawl. Yep. And when it's all done, it's two, I still have this left on the yarn. I think this is called a cake. And when I'm done with that, I'm going to start a new one and stitch all of that as well. So it, I think it's going to be quite a big shawl. But when it's done, I'm going to use the technique called blocking. So that means that you hand wash your shawl. You rinse it out carefully and then you pin this up on a, a blocking board but you you can find cheaper ways to do that and then it's going to air dry and then you're going to get a very nice you know uh, shawl where you see the patterns very nicely and stuff so i'm looking forward to try that because i've never done that um and of course i live in a small apartment small i live in a three-room apartment with my husband and daughter we have dogs and we have hobbies that takes a lot of room i mean you can see the mess behind me that's like kind of our place and so i will have to like lend one of the washing drying rooms in the basement <laughs> so yeah so that's what i've been up to and it's very easy crocheting. It's, I'm not a beginner at crocheting, but uh, I have learned stuff from this. It's called, there is a stitch called puff, puff stitches. It's those big lumps there. Yeah, I didn't know how to do those. So that was kind of fun to learn. But even though, you know, it's... Uh, I don't know what you call them. We have different names in Swedish. So, um, but you know, if you miscount or if you miss one, uh, what do you call it? Crochet 
single crochet. Well, we're going to stick in the needle if you miss one of those and jump one. I mean, two rows later, you're like, why aren't there seven of these? Just five? And then you start looking and you're like, oh, I missed two over there. And so you just have to pull up and redo. Not the whole thing, but you know, from where the mistake is. So I've, um, that's why it has taken a little bit of time because I've done quite a few of those mistakes. But I think I like the looks of knitting more than crocheting because crochet to me is like, I know maybe this is going to upset a lot of people, but crochet for me is old people's doing. And I know it's not true, but for me, it's like granny's uh, uh, what you call these cloth what you put on on tables and you know old people in my family had you know as long as fast as you put like um, a flower in the window you had to crochet one of those round whatever you call them and put it under the pot and for every uh, porcelain figure they had they had these under so for me crocheting is old people stuff but I know and I've seen a lot of crochet videos on YouTube and there is a lot of fabulous shawls and I especially like the uh, the blouses and shirts in crocheting. So I'm going to explore it a little bit more, but otherwise knitting is what I like. So I kind of fooled myself, but when I ordered like uh, the yarn for that shawl, I get bombarded with advertisement and they were selling out these yarns cheap. And I was like, ooh, I can make a cowl of that, but I can't because it's, it's wool and it's sock yarn. So when I started knitting a shawl, I was like, what is this? I don't want that around my neck. It's itching like hell. So now I have like two of these and three of these. Um, yeah, so it's a uh, magic sock wool. Uh, it's 70% wool, not merino wool, wool and 30% nylon. So what I'm going to do with this, either I will have it in my giveaway when I hit 500 or I'm going to knit some socks because I know how to knit socks and I enjoy that very much. But I want a challenge with the socks and I think I have some cool pattern patterns coming in the knit crates that I've ordered. So I'm looking forward to that. Yes, I ordered the knit crate for February and I ordered the knit crates sock yarn for February and I think that's more because I liked the sock sock pattern <laughs> uh, which is uh, which is in that uh, knit crate. I didn't really like the sock yarn colors they presented because it was like no variation, no variegated um, yarn, but I think it was like a hot pink for the Energize Me with socks. So I thought, well, that can do because I have an older sister who loves pink. She's like pink all over. So yeah, maybe, um, maybe, maybe. Uh, and then I, I chose the chill out color for the big knit, knit crate. 
The thing was that I was a little bit too late to order the January knit crate because I was thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. And when I decided I wanted the January crate because there is a pattern in there which is called the Upside Down from Stranger Things. And my daughter, she loves Stranger Things. She's like adoring Eleven. So it was kind of cool. And then I saw the Energize Me yarn for January, which was like a crazy yellow. And my daughter, she loves crazy yellow and crazy green. And so I asked her, would you like a crazy yellow upside down cow? She was like, mm hmm. Yeah. So I contacted uh, the people who work there and asked if they maybe had a January knit crate left over, which they had and they sent it right away. So that was very nice. So I have three knit crates coming along, but I've also stopped the membership on that for now because I want to stitch shawls to wear for my clothing at work because I just love the look at it. I'm, I'm following Expression Fiber Arts on YouTube and her yarn is amazing. Wow. And the shawls and you know the drapage of it. Yeah. And I don't want the thick yarn. I want thinner yarn. So um, I've ordered some yarn from her to get started on the stitching and then I have the knit crate coming and I've ordered some skeins of the Nora George hand dyed yarn Mr. Weasley's uh, the car color to stitch the the cowl that, that Michelle Bendy was stitching uh, instead of using 25, 24 different colors, I will go with the same color. So I'm really looking forward to get that. And I've ordered some organic uh, yarn as well from a company in Sweden. It's called the Organic Fabrics. I don't know. I don't know why, but I somehow figure out, found out about this company on Facebook. So I guess it was advertisement as well. And I ordered this skein. I saw two patterns of hats, which I thought the one was kind of, I think it's more of a new beginner. So it's like a, a pearl knit, pearl knit throughout the whole thing. And then you, um, uh, decrease the stitches as you know when you're ending it um, and that was a, a thicker yarn this was this it came it came like this but I've already uh, made I don't know what you call it it's not a cake it's just I wound it up in a ball. It's very nice and soft. And this is a uh, rosy green wool. It's called Cheeky Merino Joy. And it is made in England. Um, does it say somewhere? I mean, so it's organic, so it's certified, which I enjoyed. I don't see the information anywhere. Why? So is it 100% Merino? Yeah, it says there, 100% uh, organic Merino wool. 
nice so it's nice and soft so i'm looking forward to make that soft so it will be a bit bulkier and then i saw a hat also in this company but this hat has or beanies or whatever you call them has like uh, cables and stuff in it so it's more technical and then i thought well let's start with the easy one and then you can do the one with more technical stitches so it's also this nice blue it's it's not as soft as the other one but it's a bit thinner and it is a virgin wool organic and it's called merino darless it's also made in england it's certified it's from the rosy green wool so this was really nice i i think i'm gonna order a lot more yarn from these people because if it's organic it's merino it's, the thing is there's not so much variegation in it variation variegated it's not variegated but it's nice it's my color so i got those and i'm really looking forward to start with the hats and you know <sighs> this is what's so fun with crafting because i started crocheting when i was i must have been around 11 12 somewhere around there i wasn't very old 11 12 maybe a little bit younger but i started out quite early and i thought i knew every kind of crochet crochet stitch whatever you don't i've already learned something new same thing with knitting i mean seriously i only thought that there was one way of casting on stitches and i i was so wrong i wanted to start out the easy hat pattern yesterday evening and it said you're gonna do the cast on light you're gonna do the tubular cast on and i'm like the tubular cast on wasn't it called the long tail cast on and the thing is also that i i want to challenge myself to learn to read the patterns in english it's hard enough in swedish but i want to learn the how to understand it in english so i found out that the the way i know how to cast on is called the long tail cast on and then this pattern was talking about the tubular cast on so i had to figure this out i started casting on and i was like i don't understand i was going on and then i tried and okay i think it is this way and then i started knitting and i'm like it looks wrong i had to pull it all up so then i took the yarn a skein of these this yarn and started experimenting and trying how to do it properly <laughs> and i figured it out and then i was just finished it was like 12 in the night and I'm like no i have to wait to start stitching but the thing is that is so amazing that you think you know the that there is this only way and then you find out that there is other ways and it's same, same thing with the knitting i'm knitting the continental style and i've seen in movies like american movies or whatever that when they're knitting they're doing they're doing this with their arm and i'm like why are they moving their arms like that when they're knitting i'm like i didn't get it but now i understand that there's an english way of knitting and then there's the continental way of knitting and then there was some irish way of knitting and i'm like wow <laughs> wow 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 i you know even if you think no oh, i can knit you can choose to uh, challenge yourself to learn something new a new technique in that craft and it's amazing and i hope 
many years ago, 20 years ago, I was knitting a lot. I was making sweaters and everything. But I, that's like something I would like to be really good at. How, you know, learning to knit sweaters and shawls and things, gloves, uh, hats and cowls and not making them to look so very much homemade that you want to make them look a little bit professional so yeah very nice and i love yarn i love color and i just want to get to get my hands on this hand dyed fabric yarns and i wish i knew a place in europe who does this so I don't have to pay all these silly taxes from the States and now I'm afraid that we might have to do the same thing if we order from England because they left the Union so I hope not but anyway <clears throat> I ordered some of these markers very nice to have I have quite a few of those I didn't have to buy these I went to the store and I found these a nice stocking uh, what do you call it what do you call this I got a blackout needles call needles well you stitch round stuff with this it looks so nice they're red and metal and they, they were quite pointy so I grabbed all, all the sizes they had. So I got a few of these. But I found out that you actually don't need this when you're going to stitch socks or whatever. You can get a round, round, uh, rund sticka, we, as we say in Swedish. A round little cable needle cable yeah there's a cable between the needles <laughs> oh my god maybe it says here tips cables and tips needle grips no i ordered a hia hia set uh which came in this i don't know if it's hand stitched uh, or handmade little um, bag and in it there's kind of almost a complete set of cables and stuff and it, that's also a thing I've always ordered you know the cheap needles with a curly cable in and I didn't know you could buy a set of these where you switch out the needles and the cables. So they look like this. I saw uh, Shandi, it's our name, on Expression Fiber Arts. Her needles, God, these were very light. Um, she linked them to Amazon and they look very nice. Uh, but then I found the company and I got a little bit more for the money. And then you have lots of different cables in different sizes. And I learned another thing. You see how curly this is? And that is very annoying when you're stitching. But if you put them in hot water, they unwind themselves. And well, I tried, I didn't get them completely straight, but they got straighter. So it's a start. I think if you have like a bathtub or a bigger um, bowl or whatever, you can maybe get them straight. But I only had this pot where I put it in. Anyway, uh, I got one of these. Uh, and that's so nice because here's the like the European measurement and on the back side you have the American European measurement so that's kind of nice when you're buying the 
other um, when you buy patterns or watch YouTube videos with uh, when they say get a needle American needle size three and you're like okay I don't know what that is and that's like the three is like 325 in Swedish or in Sweden in Europe and you get I guess you place these on the needles or something I haven't learned how to connect the cables with the needles and what else do we get here oh then you got some more like safety pins you can use these as markers as well and I think this is the tool for connecting the cable and I got the sizes um, 275 millimeters so that's the, the European size to the 10 millimeter so the biggest is this very nice and light and the tips are very sharp um, there were only three of those and the thinnest is this so that's the 275 so and you got in between so you can all always you know um, the sizes you don't have you can uh, get that later on and then you have how many cables one two three four five six seven cables from the shortest shortest like I think this is the 40 centimeter um, round thingy and then you have the longest and it's whoo, it's long So that's nice. I'm trying to curl it together so it's going to fit in the in the bag. And on the outside there were a little zipper and in there, I found these cuties. Yeah, there's four of them. And it's something also like, is four sticking them to the needles? stoppers I think they're called I don't know how to use them so I have a lot of googling to do to learn all about this but it's fun it's fun it's motivating so that's that yeah I think that's all and I've been recording for 54 minutes and I had brought out this bag and it's a bag of finishes I have had throughout the years and I don't remember which, what they look like or anything so I wanted to take a look at that but I wanted to take a look at it on my floss tube and share it with you guys for you know having some content uh, but looking at the time I will decide to <laughs> take a look in that bag another day yes so uh, i hope you think that the yarn stuff was okay to bring in the floss tube i don't have that much floss tube to do with but as i said my channel is called linda's 144 hobbies because ta-da i do a lot of different things and i need to go with whatever my heart's desire um 
to feel good about the things I'm crafting. So, yes, I'm thinking a little bit about my giveaway. I'm halfway there. Um, I know if I don't keep putting out content, it will be difficult to get more subscribers. But if you're watching and haven't subscribed yet, please do. Uh, when I hit 500 subscribers, I will do a little giveaway. And I'm thinking to mix it up with a cross stitch, um, maybe diamond painting, um, and some yarn. Because that's the three things I have been doing now since I kind of activated the, the YouTube channel. So if you want to be a part of that, subscribe. Uh, hit like, leave a comment if you have any questions. And yeah, as I said, don't forget to hit subscribe because then I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.